Antoine Christopher here. Tasters choice in hand as always. And as you all know, I love how much I love my coffee. Episode number 14, and check this out. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button, and support me on Patreon. I got my man Farman behind there with the camera. And what are we drinking? Farman's got his tea in hand. There we go for you people at home. All right, episode 14, like I said, and I'm still working on the gorilla. As you can see, I laid down the first layer of the background. The gorilla is drawn out really nice and everything like that. Some interesting facts I found out too. Um, doing, doing the drawing with the gorilla, I'm actually doing some backstory, some research. I didn't even know they ran 25 miles an hour, so we ain't getting away from one if you're ever in the jungle. <laughs> Forget that idea. <laughs> I also found out there's four species, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm believing this one is in the Congo or the jungle or somewhere, but definitely you love this one. This is one of my favorites. And like I said, you know that it has a strength of eight to ten men, which I didn't even, I just think that's unbelievable, this creature. Um, and it's one of my, like I said, it's one of my favorites. So in doing the background, as you can see, I didn't draw out each leaf. I'm going off the picture that I have and I'm just matching it as I go because it's, it's you can't go wrong with plants, right? And it all depends on how sharp I want to make it. I'm actually making this one sharper than, more blurry so I can bring out the eight more to make it more 3D. So in doing so, as you can see up here in the first layer of colors that I have, it's very blurry. I started to get a little bit of the plant in, which is gonna make it very sharp. And then when I get down here where the big plants are, I'm gonna make that even more sharp. So in all the tone is gonna to be blurry, 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 sharp, sharp, sharp. But he's gonna definitely be standing out forward and he's gonna be massive. Um, when I draw, I also like to, to let you know, when I draw, I also enhance certain things to make it look more meaty. Like, if you were to look at it in the wild, they're going to be bigger, they're going to be look stronger and more intimidating. I want to bring that out in the body. Okay, I also turn it a little bit and I also make it more, so it's going to look like it's popping out towards you. And that's why, for me... It's, you know, you can look at the drawing and say, oh, you want to get, I like to change it around. I do not like to take it exactly like what you see there. I like to make it my own. So in doing so, I make the shoulders big. I make everything stand out more. So it's intense. I want to make you feel like you're actually there in the jungle. Um, so back to this. So as you can see here, I tested out some of the grays on it because he has some gray, it looks like white, but it's not really white. It's got some gray on there. The skin, even though it's black fur, it has a blue tint to it. So I'm experimenting with some of the blues. Up here is the other areas. I like to put my corners in. If you notice, you're probably wondering why I have this corner up here like that. For me, I like to get the corners over with. Because then it, like I said, for me, it's all about leading in. You know, like when you have a spotlight, it starts off small and goes big. It's the same principle I take for my drawing. So I'll draw it big and come in. and. Coming from back here to going in, I can realize how much blurring I need to be done. So that's why you see it like this, okay? So, that being said, um, I'm gonna continue drawing. I'm also gonna upload a time lapse for you on this project because who wants to stick around and watch me do a bunch of leaves? I'm sure you don't wanna do that. But if you see a time lapse of it, it's more interesting, right? Because you don't wanna see me and start talking to you. I'm not into all of that. But what I am into is time lapse. Boom, you're gonna see it. And when I get to the actual gorilla, which I have to name, <laughs> I gotta find the name for him. Uh, then I'll be doing. I'll be taking my time to film certain areas on how I get it, the fur to make it sharp. That I'm gonna actually get a little zoomed in a bit, and you're gonna see how I do the fur, um, and also the face. And um, wasn't much construction. It was pretty much easy to draw. And that's nothing. You can't really go wrong with fur. It's like people that draw the ocean and the, and the mountains and landscape. You really can't make a mistake with it. You can, the only thing you do with landscapes, and uh, there's this guy on, on, uh, that I was fortunate enough to uh, connect with on Instagram, and Andrew Tischler, and he actually responded to something I said, which is pretty cool. And uh, he commented. And his, what he did is the three to one ratio with the landscape and how you could move things. He does it in Photoshop puts things where he wants it to be, moves the mountains, moves the lakes, extends it, does all this sort of stuff in Photoshop, and then actually transfers it onto the, paints it onto his canvas, which is really good. And he works in huge, from what I've seen, large scales, which is pretty cool, I like that. Um, so, that being said, you can't really go wrong with rocks and lighting, you can, as long as you know where you're 
everything's going to be situated. Um, and same with the fur. It's the same thing with animal fur. You can't go line for line, nor do you want to go line for line. But what you want to do is make sure the pattern on how the, the fur flows, you want to make sure you do that in the same pattern. But as far as each line for line or fur, no, don't, don't even bother. Okay, so another thing I'd like to talk about is these things are endangered, as everybody knows, with the poachers and... Um, you know, Diane Fossey way back in the day started it. So we should definitely try to find a way to support them. It, support every endangered animal, at least something. You know, like we have the SPCA for dogs and neutering and all that sort of stuff. For me, I believe these guys are the future, the planet. They keep it what it is. And I believe that we should support any kind of endangered animals. If you can, when you can, do your homework, find out something, find out a cause and donate to it. And uh, let's keep it going because you know what? We don't want things to become extinct like the rhino, I believe, is close to being extinct. We almost outfish the ocean. All these sort of things I think we should conserve in our land, our land, you know? And um, it's very dear to my heart, um, animals and stuff like that. All right? So, once again, this is Antoine Christopher signing off. It's a short little video, nothing much to talk about. But as you can see, I started the first layer. I'm going to finish the background. Next time you come back, I'm going to have more of the background done. Maybe it'll be completely done. But then when I start the actual gorilla, I'm going to zoom in, make you see how I do it, my process, because I want to share everything. And don't forget, comment, like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. But ask me questions, no problem. I'll definitely get back to you. And I appreciate the questions that I've been getting privately on my email. That's really nice and helpful. So, that being said, Antoine Christopher here, signing off with farming my man back there. <laughs> Patience, Joey, take care. <laughs>